Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to draw a French Bulldog puppy in graphite. Now this tutorial I'm so excited about because it's one of the very first ones that I have done specifically for launching my graphite tier on my Patreon channel. Now I already offer pastel and acrylic tutorials there but I've had so many requests to add graphite tutorials to that and it's finally happened. So I'm so excited on the 1st of December it went live this year 2022 and I cannot wait to build up my graphite tutorials on Patreon. So my main aim for this tutorial was to show that you can still achieve a high level of photorealism when working on a smaller scale. You can see here that I'm applying my layers of graphite with a first layer of graphite powder and then I'm using my graphite pencils on top and then using a combination of different erasers to subtract that graphite and then add in my highlights. The way of building up your layers this way I feel achieves more depth, more realism and we're able to customise that texture that we can see in that reference photo. There is no one set layering process specifically across the board, it is going to vary depending on the fur type of the animal that we are drawing. Now one other element that this does focus on in the slower real time tutorial on Patreon is how to draw short fur. Now what I decided to do here is upload this all in real time and I did a voiceover while I'm drawing so that there are no parts sped up, there are no parts cut out and there are no secrets. I make sure that every single process from that very first base layer to the final details are included. Now if you would like to draw along to this on Patreon, um, I will link that in the description below and you do get the reference photo, line art and full material list so it's a perfect one to follow along to. Now my tutorials here on YouTube and on Patreon, there are three things that I will always talk about regardless of the medium that I'm working in. That is the fur direction, the fur length and the fur thickness. Now these three things can really change what that drawing looks like and how closely it resembles the reference photo. So we do want to be making sure that we are always paying attention to those three elements. The French Bulldog here, because they do have the creases between the eyes and around the face, you can really see how the fur direction shifts in so many different ways. If I didn't capture this accurately and as closely as that reference photo as possible, it just will not resemble the breed of the dog because of how the skin and the structure is built. I do want to make sure that I'm adjusting my pencil strokes to accommodate for that. Now this is the case with any breed that is known as being brachycephalic. So this is where they don't have a long muzzle, they have more of that shorter snout and that's going to make the creases and the folds of skin between the eyes more, more acute. So that is going to cause a shift quite drastically in the fur direction in those areas. Now here when I'm working on the cheek you can see how I'm also adjusting the pencil stroke lengths. This is going to really drastically affect the texture of the fur. If I make my pencil strokes too long, I'm going to make it look like a long haired dog, which for a French Bulldog would not be right at all. So I do want to make sure that my fur pencil stroke lengths are accurate, just as much so as the fur direction. So that leaves the fur thickness. Now this is something that I covered extensively throughout this real time tutorial. Depending on the type of fur texture that I am drawing, I will actually sometimes file down my pencil points because I want something with a bit more of a blunter edge. It's all going to depend on the type of texture that I need to create. But in most cases, I won't work with really sharp pencils because I don't like the effect that it can create. You also have to be very careful that you don't indent the paper because any additional layers that you add on top, it's very clear that you have indented that surface. Now in many cases the indentation technique is used by many different artists and if you like that look there is nothing wrong with that at all. But I personally don't like the look that it does create and I always want to try to avoid that if I can. So because of that I don't work with overly sharp pencils and I don't like applying too much pressure to the pencil. Now another thing that I do state here is I want to be making sure that I'm building up my layers gradually. You can see just how many layers each section is taking. I'm not skipping through any one part and only doing two or three layers. In all of my tutorials, regardless of the medium, I will always talk about subtle layers. And this is no exception when working with graphite. 
If you feel throughout the drawing process that you've got to an area and a stage in your portrait where you feel it's a little bit flat and you don't have the amount of realism that you're after, there's probably one of two things that's happening. One is that your contrast may not be accurate and what that means is your shadows aren't dark enough and your highlights aren't bright enough. Or it could be that you don't have enough layers built up. Now in some cases it might be a combination of those two things. So you do always want to make sure that you've got your darkest parts of the portrait as dark as you can get them and that you've allowed enough of those highlights to show through. Now that you can achieve by a range of techniques as I've shown throughout here using a combination of erasers or you could preserve the white of that paper. In many instances there's no one set rule, that's the wonderful thing about art, there are many ways to get to the same end. The only thing that I would recommend though is if you have a particularly bright highlight, maybe like a white highlight in the eye, I would always recommend to leave the white of the paper showing through and draw around that highlight just so you know that you've got that as white and as clean as you possibly can. Because even the slightest amount of graphite, in some cases, you're not going to be able to erase it completely off that surface. So I would always just err on the side of caution and allow the white of that paper to show through. And really, me working on the ears here is a prime example of that. I'm actually working from light to dark, which is typically the opposite way round when you work with most other mediums. But because the ears of this French Bulldog, and you can see a photo of the finished drawing in the corner, the ears are quite light in the centre, so I don't want to go with an overly dark layer and then run the risk of not being able to lighten it back up. So I always want to be making sure that I'm paying very close attention to that contrast. So before we move on to the body, if the tips and techniques that I've shared in this tutorial so far have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. And I upload two to three videos to YouTube every week, so if you would like to get notified of that content, then hit that subscribe and the bell button. Okay, so onto the body, and I'm going to be focusing on the main principles as I have for the face, and that's blocking in my main shapes first, breaking up that reference photo. I'm then going to be focusing on my contrast, and then I'm going to be building up my fur. Now one thing that is really important is when you start working on any part of the chest or the body is to make sure that you allow the right amount of time to get that element up to the same standard as the face. Sometimes we subconsciously rush this element because we maybe feel that it's not quite as important as the face. The face is obviously what resembles that dog or that animal the most, but if we don't apply the same amount of time that's required to the body, it can let the entire portrait down. So if you do find yourself that you know, you're guilty of maybe rushing this section, take it back, work on small sections and only focus on a few square inches at a time. I do find that's a really handy way of preventing yourself from skipping out layers and rushing through a specific area. Now that brings me on to my preferred technique. You've seen here throughout this tutorial that I do like to work in small sections. This is how I like to process the image because I personally feel that if I work on one set layer at a time that I know I'm going to skip out very important layers and therefore the portrait in my case, because this is not the same for everybody, but in my instance it's not going to have the same amount of depth or realism. If I work on small sections, I get an area about 80% complete and then I move on to the next, I find that I'm far less stressed it doesn't overwhelm me in the same way and therefore I'm far more effective with how I work. So that is just my preference. And it's almost like piecing the puzzle together. I could easily leave the drawing session after I finished half of the dog's face and go back to it the following day and I'm motivated to carry on because it already looks like that animal. Whereas if I work on specific layers, it stays with that ugly stage for a little bit too long and I do find that we get a little bit disheartened more regularly throughout that drawing process. That in itself can make it less enjoyable. So I personally want to avoid that if I can. So while I'm working on the last section of the fur here, you can really see how important it's been about focusing on the fur direction.
because the French Bulldog, they've got quite pronounced shoulders, they're quite muscly at the front, it's going to make all of that fur change direction and be a lot more acute in the way that it travels. I really want to make sure that I've captured that in order to show the shape of this animal's body. So that fur direction, the fur length and the fur thickness, they all play such an important role in every single part of the portrait. So here is a photo of my finished drawing and as you can see, now you can see the entire image, I have managed to capture and create a lot of realism here despite only working on a 6x8 size piece of paper. This here has all been down to my layering process and how I've used my pencils. As I've said in the tutorial, if the um, Patreon version, the slower in-depth tutorial is of interest, then I will link my Patreon in the description below. But if you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments because I'm more than happy to help if I can. If this tutorial was of interest and it was useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. YouTube will just share it with more people. If you would also like to get notified of all of that content that I've mentioned, then hit that subscribe and the bell button. Now that I've launched my graphite tier on Patreon, I'm going to be sharing a lot more of the graphite tutorials, the time-lapse versions, packed full of tips and techniques. So that is it for this tutorial. As always, thank you so much for watching.